Excellency President Azali Asumani, outgoing Chairperson of the African Union, Excellency Lula da Silva, President of Brazil, Excellency Musafaki Mohamed, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Distinguished Ministers, Ambassadors, Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to Ethiopia. It is an honor to be with you today. Since we last met, the world has witnessed profound transformations shaped by geopolitical competition, economic challenges, climate change, and technological advancements. While we celebrate the African Union permanent membership in the G20 and the opportunity it gives the continent to be heard on global issues, there are still important questions we need to address. What role do we Africans want to play in this evolving global power structure? And how do we become key players in the distribution of economic power? In an attempt to answer these questions, allow me to take a step back in history. Africa is where modern humans arose. Our ancient kingdoms and empires were home to many significant inventions and innovations, particularly in agricultural techniques, in the use of medicinal plants, and in the construction of impressive architectural structures, all being a testament to Africa's important contributions to the world civilizations in critical areas such as science, technology, and education. However, our continental path towards greater achievements and progress was disrupted by colonialism. The strategic approach of the colonial powers was centered around dismantling the core essence of our nations, undermining our knowledge, our spiritual and cultural heritage, replacing our ancient education systems with Western style education that was introduced as being superior. Even though Ethiopia dealt colonialism a heavy blow at the Battle of Adwa, attempts to undermine Ethiopia's unity by exploiting our diversity to perpetuate ongoing conflicts continued throughout the centuries. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uncovering these deep historic facts and bringing them to light is necessary to move forward for us as Africans for greater self-determination and dignity. Our land is rich. We are blessed with favorable weather, arable land, water, forests, natural resources, and a large youth population who embody the great potential of our continent we should not be seeking for aid. In order to grow and ensure in order to grow and ensure sustainable development, education is key. In the last five years, Ethiopia has made significant progress toward this universal access to education. We have built over 30,000 kindergartens and primary schools. We are heavily investing in secondary schools and TVs to ensure quality and skills development as well as meet labor market needs. Today, new technologies and innovative learning models 
can help our continent leapfrog into the future. Technology has taken learning beyond the classroom. Artificial intelligence is delivering personalized learning tailored to children's needs by breaking down cultural and language barriers. Such advancements will allow our youth to unleash their entrepreneurial spirit, problem-solving skills, and determination to overcome challenges on Africa's development path. But we all know that one of the major factors affecting education systems are investments and financial constraints. Our financing needs are growing due to climate change and the cost of living crisis, among others, debt is a burden. Inequalities in the international financial architecture makes access to finance inadequate and expensive. The world needs to internalize the fact that the population project projection of Africa in 2015 is 2.5 billion people, making us the most populous continent in the world. Africa's rise should be important to the entire world. We need to grow. We need to build infrastructure, assure food security, strengthen our health and education systems, and create jobs. All of this requires long-term financing. While I renew my call to all major financial agencies to consider the realities of today's world, and particularly for middle and low-income countries, allow me to draw your attention on some of the opportunities our continent has for the Africa we all want. First comes Africa's striving digital economy. Majority on the continent have phones and mobile data is rapidly growing. We are, we are starting to produce large data sets that the AI system require to allow us to learn, make prediction, inform our policies, and act. Having a robust Pan-African data governance strategy aligned with the principles of Agenda 2063 will boost the continent's competitiveness, ensure productive cross-border data flow, and protect individual rights. In addition, increasing infrastructure connectivity between our countries by building roads, airports, ports, rail networks, pipelines, and communication networks will link communities, increase trade, and enable economic integration. Furthermore, I would like to touch upon the need to secure peace and stability, which are, of course, the necessary foundation for economic and social development. Ethiopia firmly believes that regional and continental integration is essential to diversify our economies, ensure peaceful coexistence among us neighbors, and work together for our common growth. Africa needs strong regional and continental platforms where national development challenges from a geographical, logistics, and security perspective are taken into consideration. All of us here gathered today need to embrace the complexity of the world we live in and have critical debates to bring about creative but yet pragmatic solutions that will lead us to the transformation for Africa to prosper. I conclude by thanking our outgoing chairperson, President Azali Asumani, for his leadership and for representing our organization on the global stage. 
allow me to also warmly congratulate our new chairperson, wishing him success during his tenure. I wish you all a fruitful summit, a fruitful stay in your second home, and God bless Ethiopia, God bless Africa. I thank you.